Hello, dear students. I'm Dr. Mushfik Oruzov, Associate Professor of Department of Pathological Anatomy of Azerbaijan Medical University. Today, we have a lecture about the hemodynamic disorders or the disorders of blood and lymph flow. The plan of the lecture, we are discussing about the following uh, processes. First, the hyperemia, then ischemia, hemorrhage, thrombosis, embolism, disseminated intravascular coagulation syndrome, and edema. The uh, hemocirculatory uh, disturbances divided into two uh, big groups. First, the disturbances in the volume of the circulating blood, which include hyperemia, congestion, hemorrhage, edema, dehydration, and stroke. And second group uh, has the circulatory disturbances of abstractive nature, thrombosis, embolism, ischemia, and infection. First uh, of all, we have uh, discussing up about the hyperemia or the congestion, that this is the increased amount of blood in any portion of the circulatory system. The hyperemia or the congestion divided into two uh, groups. So we call it the active or arterial and passive uh, hyperemia or the venous congestion. The arterial uh, or the active hyperemia uh, can be divided to the physiological and pathological. The physiological uh, hyperemia may be uh, present in the muscular exercise, lactating other gastrointestinal tract after meal and the pregnant uterus. But the pathological active hyperemia we can find in the acute inflammation, usually local. But the passive hyperemia, or uh, we call it as the venous congestion, divided into local and general. Local resulted by the venous obstruction, but the general passive hyperemia uh, occurs during the heart or the lung failure, but in the future we have the uh, detailed discussion about uh, this one. Active hyperemia is an increased amount of blood in the arterial side and capillaries would increase the blood flow. It is usually local and with the acute inflammation but really general with some systemic generalized diseases. Uh, active means changing the muscle tone of the vessels, dilation, so we call this active. Uh, common arterial or active hyperemia is a result of increasing volume of circulating blood, increasing of amount of red blood cells, vacatic, uh, this turned from the vacuum because of decreased atmospheric pressure. Local arterial hyperemia can be angioneurotic because of dilation of arteries and arterioles. Collateral is seen in case of release of vasoactive nerve or stimulation of vasodilators and interference with the blood flow as in case of thrombosis. Hyperemia after anemia and inflammatory hyperemia. Uh, types and causes of active hyperemia. Uh, as uh, we uh, discussed uh, earlier, the physiological uh, hyperemia occurs in the active organs, such as gastrointestinal tract, after meal, after or during the digestion, lactated mammary glands, testes at mating seasons, muscles exercises, muscles of atlas during exercise, and skin to dissipate heat. But pathological hyperemia occurs in response to inflammatory stimuli, as in the following causes. The physical causes as heat, cold, sun rays, chemicals as acids or alkalizes, mechanical as trauma, infections as bacteria, viruses, 
fungi, and toxins, and others. The macroscopic pictures of active hyperemia, the affected tissue is red, swollen, and warm. On cut sections, blood leak, uh, leakage. Microscopically, the arterioles and the capillaries are filled, engorged or dilated with blood. And capillaries, they normally uh, that contain uh, one row of the erythrocytes become contain several rows up to 20 rows of erythrocytes. Uh, now that we're going to discuss about the passive hyperemia. Passive hyperemia uh, is an increase in the amount of blood in the renal side of muscular system that generally caused by decreased outflow with normal or increasing flow of blood. Two factors used in defining the types of congestion. First, duration. It may be acute and chronic. The acute passive hyperemia implies abrupt onset with rapid development. And chronic passive hyperemia slowly developing and or present for a long time. And second factor is extent. It may be localized and generalized. The local passive hyperemia the change confined to a discrete area. It can be result of a venous obstruction by thrombosis, compression of veins by tumor, abscesses, cysts, or enlarged lymph nodes, and development of collateral blood circulation. But general passive hyperemia indicates a systemic change within an organ. It can be result of left-sided uh, and right-sided uh, heart failure, diseases of lungs uh, that interfere with blood flow as a pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema and cardiac decompensation. Acute general passive hyperemia is a sudden increase in the amount of blood in the venous side of circulatory system. The causes of acute general passive hyperemia, the interference with a fraction of one or more of the so-called blood pumps. Heart, the movement of the respiration, including diaphragm, the movement of the muscles. Microscopic pictures include the affected organs become swollen, heavier, and purplish or bluish, and blood leakage from its cut surfaces. Microscopically, the veins, venules, and capillaries are injured with blood. Chronic general passive hyperemia is gradual increase in the amount of blood in the whole venous system and persists for a long period of time. The causes of chronic general passive hyperemia are present in two main organs, in the lung and heart and lungs. Uh, in the heart, they may be present in the following, uh, following conditions. First, the, during the valvular diseases, in the, during the valvular stenosis, valvular insufficiency, and valvular incompetency. Second, myocardial weakness, as in case of degeneration or necrosis, for example, during the myocarditis. Then, the anomalies of the heart, as a persistent foramen ovale, interventricular defect, and constructive lesions of the pericardium as hydropericardium traumatic pericarditis. Uh, and the second uh, organ that, that affected it is lungs. Uh, the first that causes from obliteration of the capillary bed, prevent the blood flow through the lungs as in case of chronic alveolar emphysema, pneumonia, uh, during the pneumonia the alveoli uh, filled with exudates and pulmonary fibrosis, as in case of pneumoconiosis, and causes from compression of major blood vessels, either by tumors, cysts, and etc. And uh, macroscopic pictures during the chronic general passive hyperemia, the macroscopically, the size the affected organs are in large width around border at first and atrophied later on. 
color dark red to brown due to congestion and lesions of erythrocytes that here develops the hemosiderosis. Consistency is form and cut sections leak is blood. Under the microscope, uh, we can find the following features that long standing congestion of the whole uh, body veins with thickening in the wall of venules and mild interstitial fibrosis and pressure atrophy of the parenchymal tissue. Uh, now we have discussed about the acute uh, venous hyperemia or acute venous congestion. First of all, let me discuss about the acute local venous congestion. It is temporary increase in the amount of blood in the veins of an organ or portion of an individual. Causes the sudden obstruction of veins due to intravenous thrombus and the sudden pressure of vein as in intestinal uh, torsion. Microscopic pictures, the affected organ is dark red in color and cold, edematose and leakage blood from its cut sections. Microscopic pictures are venous and capillaries are dilated and injured of with blood. In severe cases, some capillaries are ruptured. The tissue spaces are filled with fluid, transudate that here develops the edema. Uh, but chronic local venous congestion is increasing the amount of blood in the veins for a long period of time. Causes it is due to pressure of veins, which causes obstruction as tumors seized in large lymph nodes. And uh, now we have a uh, discussion about the chronic local venous congestion of some organs, as well as the lungs, liver, spleen, and kidney. The brown induration of lungs, uh, the maybe uh, in the myocardial weakness and the valvular disease of bicuspid valve. The microscopic pictures, color is dark brown due to stasis of blood and hemosiderosis. Size of organ increased, consistency is firm, indurated, and carved sections uh, show the blood leakage. Microscopic pictures, the peribronchial veins and the perialveolar capillaries are dilated and engorged with blood. The lumen of alveoli filled with transudate, desquamated exilium, and red blood cells. Later on, the erythrocytes lysis is seen and give rise to hemosiderum pigment, which is engulfed by macrophage. We call it the siderophage. And fibrous connective tissue preparation around the alveoli is seen. And here develops the normal sclerosis. These uh, illustrations, these illustrations, you show the cross picture of the brown in duration of lung and microscopically uh, in the biopsy taken from the lungs, we have found the abundant uh, brownish cells. They are the siderophage, that the macrophage that is called the hemosiderum. Chronic passive congestion of the liver, or call it as the anatomic liver. The causes, interference with the venous circulation of the liver, the hepatic veins, posterior vena cava, and lung or heart affections. Macroscopic pictures of the liver during the chronic passive congestion of the liver. Color is dark red, brownish, or yellowish due to release of hemosiderin. Size increase in the early stage and decrease or atrophy later. Consistency is firm and cut section shows characteristic not make liver due to red and yellow mottled appearance with blood leached from cut sections. And the hepatic lobules can be enumerated and represented by red spots, the congestion central vena. Microscopically, we can find the congestion of central and portal veins and hepatic sinusoids, pressure atrophy of the hepatic cords and the hepatic cells, brown pigment hemosiderin engulfed by copper cells, 
connective tissue proliferation around the central veins and fatty change in the hepatic cells of peripheral zones, zone 1 due to hypoxia. Here you see the uh, natural uh, matmic, the cut section of the matmic, and the liver uh, grossly show the occurrence of the matmic. And here we see we do the biopsy taken from the liver. Here we see the hepatic lobules, uh, and in the zone one of the hepatic uh, lobules, we uh, see the red, red color due to the uh, hyperemia, and then the, this color became to the uh, green uh, and the brown uh, for, for the development of the hemocytorin. Uh, and also uh, in the liver uh, develops the uh, fatty uh, degeneration due to hypoxia. The cyanotic induration of the spleen. It is chronic venous congestion of the spleen occurs due to right heart failure and portal hypertension from liver cirrhosis. It is characterized by the spleen in early stages moderately enlarged, while in long-standing cases there is progressive enlargement. It is deeply congested, tense, and cyanotic. The section surface is gray tan. The red pulp shows congestion and marked sinusoidal dilatation with areas of recent and old hemorrhoids. Uh, this hemorrhage may get organized, and this advanced stage, seen more commonly in hepatic cirrhosis, is called congestion splenomegaly. Uh, from this illustration, you see the cyanotic induration of spleen and brown induration of kidneys. Uh, now, let me discuss about the ischemia, or another those we call it as local anemia. Ischemia is decreased tissue blood, filling organ, body part as a result of inadequate arterial blood flow. Local ischemia occurs in blocking type pathologies of the arteries that supply the same region. But the generalized ischemia occurs in massive bleeding. The ischemia attributes uh, skin blanching or disappearance of previously visible small blood vessels, decreased organ or tissue volume, the decreasing or the lowering of local temperature, slowing of blood flow, fall of blood pressure below the abstraction, sensory disturbances, pain, malfunction, degeneration and necrosis, and atrophy of the parenchymal cells and stromal sclerosis. There are four types of local anemia. First, angiospasm anemia due to the spasm of the artery, obstructive obstruction by thrombus, compression, external compression by tumor or scar, and anemia as a result of blood redistribution. Outcomes of ischemia, they may be acute and chronic. The acute out outcomes of ischemia are the reverse to normal state, uh, or uh, maybe uh, results or by the infection and acute organ failure. The chronic uh, outcomes are the fibrosis, cirrhosis, and chronic organ failure. Now, let we uh, discussed about the hemorrhage or the bleeding. Hemorrhage is an extravasation of blood as well as the erythrocytes from vessel or heart cavities into the extravascular space or by the cavity. You know from the histology, there are three formed elements of the blood, the red blood cells or the erythrocytes, the white blood cells or the leukocytes and uh, platelets or the thrombocytes. The, in the normal physiological conditions, the leukocytes or white blood cells, um, it can leave the bloodstream. They, they some are period they circulated in the peripheral blood, and after this one, they uh, leave the bloodstream 
uh, but uh, red blood cells uh, in the normal conditions never leave the blood stream. If they will leave the blood, we'll call it the hemorrhage. Uh, there are some types of the uh, hemorrhage, the types of hemorrhage according to the uh, direction of the blood flow. It may be the external hemorrhage, for example, gastrointestinal hemorrhage or pulmonary hemorrhage. It is the bleeding to the external environment. Uh, but the internal hemorrhage, this is the bleeding to the body cavities or the perivascular soft tissue. The types of hemorrhage according to the flowing blood, maybe arterial hemorrhage and venous hemorrhage. Types of hemorrhage according to the site of origin. There are four types of the hemorrhage. Cardiac as following a penetrating heart wound, arterial due to trauma and rupture of dissecting aneurysm, capillary due to trauma, inherent vessel wall weakness or coagulation defect, and venous hemorrhage caused by trauma or surgical operation. Uh, some morphological types of the hemorrhage include the hematoma, uh, blood tumor, but this is the not uh, true uh, tumor of the blood. This is the hemorrhage with formation of a cavity filled with blood. Hemorrhagic infiltration is impregnation of tissue with blood preserving tissue components. Bryce, the planar hemorrhage on the skin, the mucosa, mucous membranes. The punctate hemorrhage, known as the petechia and ecchymosis, and apoplexy or the apoplexy, rapidly developed massive hemorrhage. Here you see the grossly uh, picture of the hematoma and the cerebral hematoma. The, uh, radiologically, the grossly and the microscopically. Uh, illustration of the hematoma. Types of hemorrhage according to location. We can divide to the internal hemorrhage, we divide it, and external hemorrhage, but they have different names. The internal hemorrhage, uh, the hemorrhage in the body cavities, it may be hemothorax, hemorrhage in the pleural cavity, hemopericardium, hemorrhage in the pericardium cavity, Hemoperitoneum hemorrhage in the abdomen cavity, hemoarthrosis hemorrhage in the joint cavity, hematocele hemorrhage in the tunica vaginalis of testis, cephal hematoma hemorrhage under periosteum of skull, hematorrhagis the spinal cord hemorrhage. But the external hemorrhages include the epistaxis hemorrhage from nose. Hemoptysis or the coughing of blood, hemorrhage from lung. Hematemesis, the indicates hemorrhage from stomach. Melena, hemorrhage from intestine. Metrorrhagia, hemorrhage from the uterus, but not during the menstruation. Hematuria, blood in urine. And purpura, tissue multiple hemorrhage. There are three mechanism of, mechanisms of hemorrhage. First, rupture or the Hemorrhagia prorexin, uh, the due to rupture of the blood vessel uh, wall, due to during the injury, inflammation, necrosis, aneurysms, muscular malformations, sclerosis, and hyalinosis. Second mechanism is the uh, hemorrhagia per diabrosin or the vessel wall corrosion during the after the influence of the tumor cells necrosis, inflammation, during the ectopic pregnancy. Uh, third type is the uh, hemorrhagia per diapedesis, the through the intact wall, uh, by the hypoxia, intoxication, and hemorrhagic diathesis. What means the hemorrhagic diathesis? This is the hemorrhage tendency states, uh, maybe, uh, during the angiopathy, the hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, rendo Osler disease, scurvy, and Schoenlein hemoptysis, in the thrombocytopathies, thrombocytopenia, 
hemolytic uremic syndrome, one real liver disease, and urinary coagulopathia and disseminated in vascular coagulation syndrome, TIC syndrome. Uh, the outcomes of the hemorrhage may be resorption with formation of the blood pigments, cyst formation after resorption of blood, encapsulation and germination of connective tissue of hematoma, we call it organization, and association, infection, and suppuration. Now, let, uh, we discuss about the thrombosis. What means the thrombosis? It is the formation of a solid mass from the elements of circulating blood within the vascular system. Thrombus during life of the patient. Thrombus, it is intravital, intravascular clot of all blood elements and, and in continuation of tunica intima of the vessel lining. There are three factors. Uh, three primary influences or three causes of the thrombosis that we call it the Virkov's triad. First is endothelial injury that can lead to thrombosis by itself, for example, inflammation of heart valves, and during the endothelial injury, uh, the uh, results by the expose of subendothelial extracellular matrix that uh, provide the platelet adherence and the release of tissue factors. After this one, the uh, depletion of the process cyclins that uh, results by the primary and secondary hemostatic uh, plaque formation. It is produced by the following causes, uh, by the bacteria, toxins, or the chemicals, or diseases of the wall of blood vessels, such as the arteroma, arteriosclerosis, and pressure from outside by ligature or, uh, or stasis. Second postulate of the Virkov triad is slowing of blood stream or the turbulence or stasis. Normally, you know, the blood, the flow as the laminar, uh, laminar flow in the blood vessels. So the cellular elements, cellular blood uh, elements uh, flow in the middle one that's around to the, by the plasma. Uh, disrupt normal laminar flow allows platelets to contact in the tail, prevents dilution of activated clothing factors by fresh flowing blood, allows the buildup of thrombi that slow the inflow of anticoagulants and promotes endothelial cell activation. And causes this seen in aneurysms, cardiac anomalies and venous stasis and hyper uh, hyper coagulability, that any alterations of the coagulation pathway that uh, predispose the slowly flowing of blood. Alteration, third postulate of the Virchow triad is alterations in blood composition, that increase in blood elements, increased fibrinogen level and platelet number, leading to increased viscosity. It is the most important factors factor in the venous thrombus. Uh, here, uh, there is the illustration, histological picture of the thrombus of an endothelial defect in the polar arteritis nodosa. Here you see the wall of the blood vessels, the lumen of the blood vessels for the erythrocytes and uh, formation of the thrombus. Uh, Post-mortem blood coagulation is formed mainly from unstabilized uh, stabilized fibrin and there is no retraction. So uh, sometimes uh, in the autopsy uh, we have uh, differentiate the post-mortem blood clot from the vital thrombus. So the post-mortem uh, blood clot is Gelial-like and flexible, located freely with a smooth and shiny surface. But the thrombus attached to the vessel wall bends with corrugated surface that we call the micro lines of Zahn. 
uh, there is the uh, fine uh, gross pictures of the post-mortem clot in the pulmonary artery and the thrombus of the aorta during the arteriosclerosis. So the consistency is firm here in the thrombus, uh, very uh, loose in the post-mortem blood clot, is the shiny, uh, mainly uh, found in the venous uh, vessels, veins, but the thrombus mainly found in the artery that they uh, firmly attach to the wall of the blood vessels. Uh, thrombosis uh, morphology. According to the structure, there are four types of the thrombus. First, white thrombus. It consists of the fibrin uh, with the platelets and the leukocytes that is formed slowly with a rapid blood flow, usually in the arteries. Second, red thrombus that include the fibrin with red blood cells formed rapidly at slow blood flow, usually in the veins. Third type is mixed thrombus, the combination of white and red thrombus, uh, that we call the layer thrombus, consists of attached to the vessel wall head that uh, consists of the white thrombus, body, mixed thrombus, and tail, the red thrombus, usually in forms in the veins and aneurysms. And the special type of the thrombus is a hyaline thrombus. It consists mainly destroyed uh, form, uh, uh, form blood cells, the erythrocytes, thrombocytes, and plasma proteins, as well as the fibrin and fibrinogen. So the thrombus mass uh, similar to the hyaline, translucent, we call the hyaline thrombus. It mainly develops in capris and other small caliber uh, microcirculatory vessels. The hyaline thrombi most often occur with DIC syndrome, the disseminated intravascular coagulation syndrome. This is the gross picture of the mixed thrombus with the head, body, and tail. In relation to the uh, vessel, Lumen, there are two types of the thrombus, the mural thrombus uh, that directly uh, attach to the vessel wall, but not uh, completely uh, abstract uh, the lumen, vessel lumen, and occlusive thrombus that form during the growth of mural thrombus. Uh, there are also, any special forms of the thrombus, the progressive thrombus that growing the throughout blood flow, ball like thrombus in the left atrium, dilatation, aneurysm thrombus, and micro thrombus that see in the disseminated intravascular coagulation. Here we see we do the ball like uh, thrombus in the left atrium of the heart. Uh, after formation of the thrombus, it under, uh, undergo the uh, dissolution that we call the fibrinolysis. You know, in the body we have the blood, we have the coagulation system, and uh, antagonist the uh, entire coagulative system or the fibrinolysis system. A trans concurrent fluid thrombogenesis restores blood flow in vessels occluded by a thrombus and facilitates healing after inflammation and injury. The proenzyme plasminogen is converted by proteolysis to plasmid, the most important fibrinolytic protease, a plasmid split fibrin. Uh, thrombi may develop anywhere in the cardiovascular system, the cardiac chambers, valve, cusps, arteries, veins, or capillaries. They vary in size and shape, dependent on the site of origin. The arterial or cardiac thrombi usually begin at the site of endothelial injury, uh, for example, in the arteriosclerotic plaque or turbulence in the bifurcation size of the blood vessels. But the venous thrombi characteristically occur in size of stasis. Arterial thrombi grow in a retrograde direction 
from the point of attachment. The nostromboi extend in the direction of blood flow, for example, toward the heart. The propagating tail of either thrombi may not be well attached, particularly in ways is prone to fragmentation, creating an embolus that uh, today we'll be discussing about this, about the embolism also. When formed in the heart or aorta, thrombi may have grossly and microscopically apparent laminations called lines of sound. These are produced by alternating pale layers of platelets and mixed with some fibrin and darker layers containing more red cells. When arterial thrombi arise in heart chambers or in the aortic lumen, they usually adhere to the wall of the underlying structure and are termed neural thrombi. Here is the uh, histology of the thrombi, macroscopic picture of the thrombi. We, we see with you the uh, wall of the coronary artery, that uh, another size, the nerves in the epicardium, epicardial fat tissue, but the lumen of the coronary, coronary artery filled with the thrombus. This is the recent thrombus adherent to the wall. And we see with you the fibrin need fork. The lumen of the coronary wall uh, absolutely uh, filled with the uh, thrombus. Arterial thrombi are usually occlusive. The most common size in descending order are coronary, cerebral, and femoral arteries. It is usually superimposed on an arteriosclerotic plaque and are firmly adherent to the injured arterial wall and are gray-white and friable, composed of tangled mesh of platelets, fibrin, erythrocytes, and degenerating glycosides. Here uh, you see the histological structure of the occlusive arterial thrombus. This is the section of the blood vessels, arteries, and the lumen filled with the uh, thrombus, occluded with the thrombus. No any lumen spaces shown in these sections. But the venous thrombosis, also called the phlebothrombosis, is almost invariably occlusive. The thrombus often takes the shape of the vein. Because this thrombi form in a relatively static environment, they contain more enmeshed erythrocytes and are therefore known as red or stasis thrombi. The phlebothrombosis most commonly affected the veins of the lower extremities in the 99% of cases. The outcomes of thrombosis may be favorable and unfavorable. The favorable include the aseptic autolysis and organization with sewage and vascularization and petrification. But unfavorable include the septic autolysis, thrombobacterial embolism that results with the sepsis, and thromboembolism. The histology of the coronary artery we see the wall of the artery and the lumen of the artery that are uh, filled with the organized thrombus. But in the organization, we uh, we'll study also later in our next uh, lectures. This is the, the development of the connective tissue. Embolism is circulation in the blood or lymph, foreign particles known as the embolus, followed by blockage of blood vessels. Uh, there are three types of the embolisms. First, the orthograde, direct, with blood flow. First, from the nose system of the systemic circulation and right heart into vessels of the pulmonary circulation, from the heart cavities, aorta and large arteries, rarely from the pulmonary veins and arteries of internal organs into smaller vessels, and from branches of the portal system into the portal vein of the liver. Second one, retrograde against blood flow in case of heavy embolus, and third, 
paradoxical moving of the immolas from arteries to their veins, bypassing the microcirculation through the defects of heart symptom or uh, arteria venous anastomosis. Embolism types according to aggregated state. First, there may be solid, the thromboembolism, tissue embolism, microbial embolus, and the foreign bodies. Second, liquid, fatty embolus, gaseous, they also divide to air and gas embolus, and mixed, for example, the amniotic fluid. There are the thromboembolism, there are two types of the thromboembolism, arterial and venous. First, let me discuss about the arterial thromboembolism, the source, the left cavity of the heart, the aorta, and other arteries, defects, in fact, in fact of various organs and tissues, including gangrene, ischemic stroke. And venous thromboembolism, the source are the veins of systemic circulation, more often veins of lower limbs, pelvis and the thromboembolism of the pulmonary artery. Uh, here we see the thromboembolism of the pulmonary artery. The, you see the reflexogenic zone in the area of purification of the pulmonary artery and the thrombosis, during the thrombosis, this the reflexogenic uh, area is uh, stimulated that results with the sudden death. Uh, tissue or the cell embolism. Uh, we uh, can found this during the uh, malignant tumor because the malignant uh, tumors or due to tissue damage, the uh, tissues or the malignant uh, tumor cells, they enter to the bloodstream and flow uh, by the blood, then leave the bloodstream and uh, during the circulation they can uh, they can uh, play a role as the immolus. Uh, they are uh, fixed by, as the infection and metastasis. Here is the uh, metastatic tissue. Uh, this is the biopsy taken from the lung, and in the lung, we see the uh, clusters of the breast cancer. Here, 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 here. Uh, there are abundant uh, tumor cells in the lung, the metastasis. Microbial embolism, the sources by the bacteria, fungi, animals, parasites, protozoa, effects as the metastatic abscesses, such as the pile of labiatical abscesses, and embolism by foreign bodies, the fragments of shells and mines, ulids, and etc., cholesterol, crystals, or Atherosclerotic plaques. Here uh, you see the biopsy taken from the kidney, and in the glomeruli, we see the uh, inflammation. We call it the suppurative uh, nephritis. This is the embolic suppurative ne nephritis. Fatty embolism uh, occurs in the fracture of the long bones or the massive subcutaneous tissue. Uh, they affect the acute lung failure and cardiac arrest at blockage two uh, of third of pulmonary capillaries. Here is the histopathology of fatty pulmonary embolism. This is the biopsy taken from the lung, and here we see the emoli, the fats in the pulmonary veins, pulmonary vessels. And also the another uh, histological uh, pictures of the uh, emolas in the bone marrow and the fat emoli of the pulmonary tissue. Higher embolism. Sources the neck veins with injuries, uterus veins after childbirth that results by sudden death. But gas embolism uh, develops during the rapid 
the compression in the divers or the gas gangrene that affects the centers of necrosis and hemorrhage mainly in the brain. Uh, the amniotic fluid embolism sources the rupture of the cervix and uterus during childbirth that compose of the include part including tissue, thromboplastin, solid fetus elements, the meconium, the scales of epidermis, fat, lanova that uh, affects with the disseminated intracoagulative, uh, intravascular coagulation syndrome. Here is the uh, histological pictures during the amniotic fluid embolism. You see the scales uh, from the epidermis of the fetus in the maternal uh, blood vessels. Now we have discussion about the DIC syndrome or the disseminated intravascular coagulation. Uh, synonyms are the thrombohemorrhagic syndrome or the conception coagulopathy. DIC is an acquired non specific process of hemostatic disorders developed as a result of excessive activation of coagulation and anticoagulation systems. The main symptoms of uh, DIC are the phase change of hemostasis in a hypercoagulative state replaced by incoagulability, blockage of microcirculatory by aggregates of blood cells and microthrombus, and bleeding and hemorrhage or uh, apoplexy. Etiology of the uh, DIC first infections, especially generalized sepsis in 30 to 50 percent, all types of shock acute intravascular hemolysis, obstetrical pathology, premature detachment of the placenta, amniotic fluid embolism, intrauterine fetal days, and others, tumors, especially leukemia, thermal and chemical burns, and extreme trauma. Pathogenesis of the disseminated intravascular coagulation. First, activation of hemostatic system bar various factors, diffuse intravascular coagulation and aggregation of blood cells mainly in the microcirculatory, conception coagulopathy, spread of hemorrhage and alter alterative change in various organs and tissues. There are four stages of the DIC. Stage one, uh, the hypercoagulation and aggregation of blood. In the laboratory, the blood clotting time decreasing. Second stage is the transitional stage. In the laboratory, normal blood clotting time, but the fibrinogen contained and thrombocytopenia, uh, the fibrogen uh, decreased and we found the thi uh, thrombocytopenia. Third stage, called as the hypercoagulation, In the laboratory, the blood clotting time increasing, but the fibrogen contained the decreasing and uh, is the thrombocytopenia and uh, stage four, the regenerative or outcomes and complications. The types of the disseminated intravascular coagulation according to the course. First, pre acute uh, DIC. The hypercoagulation phase lasts up to a few minutes, followed by hypocoagulation, for example, in the shock. Acute develops in 24 hours, example, this, during the septicemia. Subacute develops in a few days with recurrence in the pyroseptisemia and chronic, or this is the subacute relapsing. The pathology of the the DIC. Direct signs of the uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation is the aggregation of blood lemons of the red blood cells and the bloodless and fibrin structures. First, individual fibers and bundles of fibrin in subthrombus, covering by fibrin layer of vessel walls and formation of the microthrombi. 
fibrin, hyaline, globular, platelets, lipocytes, erythrocytes, and mixed. But indirect signs are the hemorrhage and necrosis. Here is the histological pictures. Uh, during the DIC, here we see the hyaline thrombi in the kidneys and in the lungs. And final stage, the fourth stage, uh, we'll discuss the change of the organs during the DIC. The shock lungs, we call the acute respiratory distress syndrome or the diffuse alveolar damage, the edema, hemorrhage, aggregation of the red blood cells, microthrombosis, and hyaline membranes. For example, in the shock. Symmetrical cortical necrosis of the kidneys that characterized by the microthrombosis of the glomerular capillaries with necrotizing nephrosis, uh, for example, the bacterial shock, hemorrhage and necrosis of the adrenal glands, or the syndrome, the water hose, uh, free direction, for example, in the meningopoxemia, multiple small focal necrosis and hemorrhage of brain, hypophysis, myocardium, liver, pancreas and the hemorrhage, erosions, and ulcers of gastrointestinal tract, for example, the thermal burns and the bacterial shock. This is the uh, gross view and the histopathology of the diffuse alveolar damage. This is the gross view of the lung and the uh, microscopy picture of the DAD. And finally, let me discuss about the edema. Edema, this is the increased fluid in the interstitial tissue spaces. Fluid may also accumulate in the body cavities. We call uh, it the hydrothorax, hydropericardium, or the hydroperitoneum, also called as the ascites. For example, the main um, clinical signs of the liver cirrhosis is, is the ascites. But the massive generalized edema is called anasarca. Fluid homo homeostasis. Homeostasis is maintained by the opposing effects of vascular hydrostatic pressure and plasma colloidal osmotic pressure. Here is the illustration of the hydrostatic pressure and the plasma colloid osmotic pressure. The edema fluid we call the transudate. Transudate is a protein pure, a specific gravity less than 1.012, but the exudate is the protein rich fluid uh, this is the inflammatory edema. Uh, differences between transudate and exudate. Uh, as we said that transudate, the infiltrate of the blood, of blood plasma without change in endothelial permeability. But the exudate is the edema of inflamed, inflamed tissue associated with increased vascular permeability. The transudate is non-inflammatory edema but the exudate is inflammatory edema. The protein content in the transudate is low, less than three uh, gram milli in the deciliter, mainly albumin, low fibromyxin, has no tendency to coagulate, but in the exudate, high. The readily coagulates due to high contents of fibromyxin and other coagulation factors. The cellular content of the transudate. The few cells, mainly mesothelial cells and cellular debris, but in the exudate there are many cells, inflammatory as well as parenchymal cells. For example, the transudate uh, is, uh, edema is the edema in congest congestive cardiac failure, but the exudate, purulent exudate such as past. About the exudate, we'll detail it, discuss to you in the, our next lecture of the inflammation. There are 
for uh, developmental mechanisms of edema. First, increased intravascular hydrostatic pressure. It is associated increased blood volume in the microvasculature, such as venous congestion due to heart diseases, thrombosis, and aneurysms, or with active hyperemia in acute inflammation. Second one, increased microvascular permeability. It is associated with the inflammation and acute due to bacteria and their toxins and snake venom lead to leakage of plasma fluid and edema. Third, decreased plasma colloidal osmotic pressure. It results from decreased plasma proteins, mainly albumin, as in case of kidney diseases, is the most causes of edema. And finally, lymphatic obstruction, lymphogenic edema. It occurs in case of tumor, abscess, and intravascular paralysis of the filarias, lead to accumulation of edematous fluid. Here is the uh, grossly picture of the filariasis, the parasitic infection caused by an infection with roundworms of the filaroidea type and affecting inguinal lymphatics resulting in elephantiasis. Morphology of the edema. Uh, subcutaneous edema. Uh, edema of the subcutaneous tissue is most easily detected grossly in naked eye, not microscopically. When, if we we'll push our finger into it, the depression uh, remains here. Dependent edema is a prominent feature of congestive heart failure. Facial edema is often the initial manifestation of the nephrotic syndrome. Pulmonary edema is most frequently seen in congestive heart failure. May also be present in renal failure, adult respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary infections, and hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, during the pulmonary edema, the lungs are typically two, three times the normal way. The gross sectioning causes an outpouring of frothy, sometimes blotting fluid. Here you see the arrows show this fluid, and in the microscopic picture, show the transudate in alveolar lumen, the thickened of the alveolar walls by the dilated capillaries and interstitial edema, and the dilated capillaries in alveolar walls. And uh, cerebral uh, edema, the may be uh, found in the trauma, abscess, in the neoplasms, uh, in the tumors, in the infections, the encephalitis due to, uh, say, West Nile virus, and etc. The clinical correlations. Uh, the big problem is uh, there is no place for the fluid to go because yeah, in another organs, uh, for example, in the uh, abdominal cavity, when the fluid uh, leak, the plasma leak is to uh, form the edematous fluid, uh, it it have it has the uh, enough spaces to fill up, such as the uh, abdominal cavity to formation of the ascites, because this is the loose uh, organs. But in the brain, there is no any spaces. The fluid when the uh, edematous fluid uh, enter to the uh, cerebral cavity, it press the uh, brain, uh, brain, uh, and uh, it uh, it um, uh, must to uh, flow from any any anyone from one one side, and it found the uh, foramen magnum of the occipital bone. When it uh, flow through the foramen mag magnum of the occipital bone. Yeah, it presses the medulla oblongata to the uh, occipital bone because 
uh, in the medulla oblongata there are vital uh, centers as well as the uh, respiratory centers uh, during the press, uh, pressing of the medulla oblongata to the occipital bone the uh, respiratory center uh, damage that uh, decreases by the uh, death so the herniation into the foramen magnum will kill and here uh, we see we do the uh, congestion the flat gyre and the neuro uh, suits uh, now we uh, finished our today uh, lectures uh, thank you for your uh, attention <laughs>